Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is my fifth try. I just... I can't do this right. I can't do this right. I give up. This is my fifth time trying to record this video. I came across this article on NBC News, and this is an opinion piece, but it's related to another article. Not directly, but indirectly. This article is referenced. This is an opinion piece, and it's about... Allegedly, Marvel's Daredevil Asian problem, which is really Hollywood's bigger Asian problem. And we'll discover what that is. It's probably the stereotypical depiction of an Asian character being depicted as some sort of ancient foreign person or a foreign person who has ancient knowledge. Well, I mean, why is it a trope? It's because it's interesting and it's compelling. Well, I just see, this is why I have trouble making these videos, because I came up with another point that in the last five iterations, or attempts, I should say, I didn't even think of this point. It just popped in my head. Maybe I should really start writing scripts, but I, I need to get better at talking off the cuff, so let's continue. We must stop perpetuating the notion that Asians are inherently foreign or other and allow them to live on screen, as we do in life, fully and unapologetically. Okay, I, sorry, sorry for that pause. I was trying to really seal what I just thought of in my head, trying to really implant it so I can call it later reading this article. Probably should, I should, probably should have at least written bullet points, but whatever. So this is written by an Asian woman who has her finger on the pulse of culture, I'd say. She apparently writes about Marvel, Asian representation, and media, and whatnot, so she's very politically motivated, which is fine. I'm politically motivated. I'm coming at this article, making this video, with a political agenda. So, for the sake of full transparency. But I just so happen to not see the world in the way that this person does, and I'm happy for it, because what a miserable way to see the world in. So she brings up this, where this character, or sorry, actor named Peter Kinshota, Kinshota? Shin Koda, fucking A, kill me now. He accused Jeff Loeb of telling the writers to downplay his character because nobody cares about Asian and Chinese people, which is what she says nobody cares about Chinese and Asian people so this is allegedly there's no proof and she talks about how uh, neither Loeb or Marvel Studios have responded to this however Stephen DeKnight who is the showrunner for season one did respond to it saying that nobody ever talked to him about uh, downplaying any characters in season one so this woman decides to go out of her way this lovely woman right here who is extremely objective decided to mention that Steve tonight didn't mention anything about his character's arc in season two because that, that's her way of saying yeah you know this was a legend but this response denying the claim never talked about season two because you know a denial is never good enough this, this woman wants to believe something so this little nugget right here, the fact that he specified season one, proves that, well, season two, that's still on the table. So she goes on saying that the words themselves may be shocking. The alleged words that nobody cares about Chinese people and Asian people. So let me call back this point that I thought of at the beginning. If nobody cares about Asian people and Chinese people, then why is it a sought after trope? Why is it a trope utilized in almost everything? If it's so unpopular, nobody cares about Asian people, then why is the basic play on ancient Asian culture and depicted by Asian people so attractive? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because nobody in their right mind, especially a producer, thinks that nobody cares about Asian people. Daredevil's Netflix counter, opposition, opposing force, is compelling, especially since Daredevil is a ninja character. Let's continue. She says that 
this is a problem with Marvel Studios and Hollywood itself. The dehumanization of Asian, in this case specifically East Asian characters, by reducing them to their often evil foreignness. Okay, so let, let's establish one fact. She's not talking about what this guy is mad about, that Asian people... Nobody cares about them, therefore they're downplayed. She is saying that Asian characters are reduced and dehumanized, but they're reduced to their often evil foreignness. So that's what this woman right here is upset about. So let's continue. Is she going to substantiate her claim? In the next paragraph, she says, Shinkoda appeared on nine episodes of Daredevil during the first and second season. He played Nobu Yoshioka, a villain from the mysterious Asian organization, The Hand. Which, let me just say right now, she's wrong. I even have, I'm a Wikipedia scholar, and Wikipedia says she's wrong. But I'm a Daredevil fan, Daredevil's my favorite character. I've read so many comics, and I watched everything that Daredevil is in, including, including The Trial of the Incredible Hulk. And that Ben Affleck movie. Nonetheless, well, The Hand, since it's a ninja organization, evil mystical ninjas, yes, they're primarily based in Japan. But they operate internationally. As she acknowledges herself, but she won't admit, she brings up how... So, okay, so let's just get this point across. She's wrong that it's an Asian organization. She talks about how over the course of the inter interconnected Marvel series, Daredevil, Iron Fist, and the Defenders, the Hand emerged, the a supposedly Asian organization, the Hand emerged as a main threat to New York. The organization was introduced via Nobu, who is one of the leaders of the Hand, who is Japanese, so staying true to Japanese culture, and another Asian villain, Madame Gao. Well, she's not being specific. Madame Gao, in the TV show, is Chinese. Which means that this organization of ninjas is based outside of Japan. So yeah, she did say she did say Asian, but that's only in the TV show early on that we see of. Later on, we learn about their involvement with Elektra, who is not really an Asian character. She's an exotic woman, but she's not an Asian character. Nonetheless, let's keep going. Yep, yeah, but at the time the overall story came to a climax and the Defenders, the hands leader, ended up being a white villain played by Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, only you would be upset about that because you think that the hand is exclusively Asian. Exclusively Asian. I didn't know that... See, in a way, you're kind of racist. What kind of Asian are you? Because you assume that everything Asian is automatically reciprocal to other Asians. Not reciprocal, not reciprocal, but you think an Asian culture from one specific area is somehow horizontal to other cultures. Being a ninja is not a Chinese thing. That's a Japanese assassin or agent of the state. So she's mad that the evil character of the hand, the leader, was played by a white woman, despite the fact that in the previous paragraph, she was mad that Asians were being reduced to their often evil foreignness. And yet, she gets upset at an instance where a main villain of this supposed Asian organization is not an Asian character being reduced to their often evil foreignness. And this is the epitome of not having any principles, is that you say you have one problem, well, no. You piggyback off of something that was an issue, which is only related in the fact that it's about Asians, that nobody cares about Chinese people, and then you bitch about something that completely refutes the idea that nobody cares about Asian people. Otherwise, this would not be a trope that is often utilized, because it turns out people are interested in stories that involve ancient Asian traditions and culture in myth but then she gets mad that Asians are just reduced to that but then she's mad when a white person is being reduced to an evil foreign presence rather than an Asian and this trend of inconsistency continues cause she got mad that the only time that Marvel has used an Asian supporting character or this isn't the only time that Marvel has used an Asian supporting character to accelerate a white hero's journey. Now she's going to talk about the protagonists instead of the antagonists. 
So she's going to spotlight the movie Doctor Strange. She's going to get mad at the main character. Not the main character. But one of the main Asian supporting supposed characters is a whitewashed, the Asian one. Of course, this was backlash that Marvel did actually face. Because they cast <clears throat> uh, Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One. So Marvel Studios, of course, responded to this saying, Hey, no, the Ancient One is a title that's not exclusively held by any one character. And it's a moniker that is passed down through time. And this specific iteration of the Ancient One is the embodiment of Celtic. So that's according to Marvel Studios. So again, this person and the people who are upset at supposed Asian representation being very low or non-existent are upset at something that they don't actually understand. And <clears throat> so she talks about that being whitewashed. So again, contradicting that th this very basic principle that Asians are depicted as foreign. Now that's not evil. I guess she's all right with them being depicted as foreign gooders instead of evil. But that's not the case because she's upset that this side character, with chubbier cheeks, Wong, exists solely to help the hero Stephen Strange learn to harness vaguely Asian mystical powers. He coincidentally has no first name because to have one would be to give him a life unrelated to his Asianness and value to Strange. So, depicted as a good or a bad Asian, a foreign bad Asian is bad. Being depicted as a good foreign Asian, well, that's good. Being a white character being depicted as evil and foreign, that's bad because it's taking representation away from Asians. Being depicted as a good character who is Asian, well, that's bad because it's taking away Asian representation. No consistency, full of contradictions, which means this person is philosophically corrupt. Probably miserable. Has no idea what she believes in other than representation and this weird, inconsistent cultural Marxism. And one thing I'd like to call out is the fact that um, the ancient one played by this sorry, white woman doesn't have a first name either. She's just referred to as the ancient one. That's it. I mean, not only are you wrong, because she's not an ancient mystic. She's not an ancient mystic. She's a Celtic mystic. But she is not referred to by any name. So let's take the assumption that she's supposed to be an Asian type character. She is not given a first name, which renders your grievance right down here that... Sorry. Right down, right up here, that Wong is not given a first name because it would give him a life unrelated to his Asianness. You just made this up. You just pulled this out of your ass. There's no proof for this. You just made this up. I mean, I can't say anything other than there's no proof. I mean, it takes five seconds to say, to debunk that. There is no proof. At all. That's it. So I'm just going to leave that. So then she goes on to talk about Iron Fist, how a white actor was cast as Iron Fist, a superhero who essentially receives magical powers from a mystical world of Asian monks. So, and she acknowledges that Iron Fist is a historically white character. However, she mentions that fans, including herself, were upset that they cast a white person. And she's upset that Marvel didn't correct the often offensive portrayal of Asians by making the hero himself... Wait, what? Sorry, I misread that because it's just so different. So, fans were hoping that Marvel would correct the comics' often offensive portrayal of Asians by making the hero himself Asian or part Asian. And then she brings up how Jeff Loeb appeared at uh, Comic-Con in 2018 wearing a karate uniform because that's offensive. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And then she continues to go on and mention Last Samurai and blah, 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 a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. She mentions stories that explore Asian 
in Asian American identity as tied to immigration and heritage are real and valid, especially when coming from Asian and Asian American filmmakers. I don't ever want to see an Asian filmmaker or a black filmmaker or any filmmaker who isn't Caucasian or light-skinned making any film that has light-skinned characters because they just don't understand what it is to be white. But the fact that they occupy so much of what little Asian representation we have is indicative of the accepted Hollywood belief that all stories about Asians must involve a foreign element. This belief makes it easy for a Hollywood executive, allegedly like Leb, to discount Asian characters. Okay, so let's just abstract what she's saying. Asian characters are, aren't are depicted as often as they should be, and they're often depicted as foreign characters. But then she's upset when a white main character or a, uh, an Asian type character is cast as a white person. I guess she's upset that an Asian's not being represented, even though... In the first part of this article, she complained that Asians were being dehumanized because, you know, they're being stereotyped. So this is two different grievances throughout this article that is just being constantly switched. It starts from an Asian character not being represented two Asian characters being represented offensively, and she's mad at both. This is how inconsistent and you're... I, there's a word for it. I don't, this article is an incoherent non-sequitur, essentially. She's upset that Asian characters are depicted as evil foreigners. And then she gets upset when a character isn't an Asian evil foreigner that is a white evil person or that an Asian stereotype according to her is played by a white person I mean I really hate it when Asians are depicted as foreigners but I really really want them to be depicted as a foreigner instead of a white person you know what I mean this woman right here, she has no beliefs. And one thing I really want to highlight is nobody's watching Daredevil about a blind ninja and expecting there to be this major plot section, a, a good fraction of the story. Nobody's expecting to see an Asian person and just sitting down, eating popcorn or eating food or going to work. Because that's not what Daredevil is about. Daredevil is about ninjas. So yeah, you're going to see Asians depicted as ninjas. Imagine that. This just proves right here that anybody with a cultural Marxist mindset can look at anything and find a problem with it. Anything that you would think shouldn't be a problem. Because you know what? This woman, just based on her article and her inconsistencies, right there, right there right there, right there, would get mad if they made a Daredevil show about ninjas and this was, I don't know, if this was uh, Matt Damon and then you had Mark Wahlberg and then you had Will Smith, right? And then you had Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> and then you had Jimmy Kimmel and then you had... I don't know, Anderson Cooper decided to star in it. You just had a cast of white people as the ninjas. This woman right here would get offended. And this would be Marvel's Daredevil refuses to hire Asians as an Asian organization or some shit like that. That's what's wrong with these people. She has no principles. She's philosophically bankrupt. She doesn't even know what she's mad about. She's mad at lack of Asian depiction, and then she's mad at every single way Asians are depicted if it's not boring. This is a show about ninjas. Daredevil, the main character, he's a ninja. So you're going to see a ninja organization which is primarily based in Japan because ninja is an Asian, not an Asian, a Japanese concept. Have a good day.